Welcome back. It is the Buckmaster Show in the Green Things Zocalo Village Studio. Time for our monthly interview segment featuring the monthly scam alert. Scam of the Month alert presented by the Better Business Bureau of Southern Arizona. Always a pleasure to welcome Pam Krim, CEO of the BBB. I wish Pam's smiling face was across from me right now in the studio, but of course we understand that all of our interviews being done right now telephonically. Pam, how are you? I'm great, Bill. It's great to hear your voice. And again, I'm sorry, I can't be in the studio with you. Well, well maybe next month. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But anyway, Pam, yeah. uh, BBB, what's the word? You guys are open for business, correct? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm very, very proud of our team. Uh, we've been uh, working remotely since the 18th of March. And all of our services for businesses and consumers are up and running at full capacity. So uh, going to the website, is that kind of the starter place for people that would like information during this time? Yeah. If you go to bbb.org, you can also go to uh, bbb.org forward slash coronavirus. And there's a wonderful list of information for consumers as well as business owners. So is, is this a so resource page, page devoted to the coronavirus? It is. And we also have one devoted to uh, price gouging and et cetera. Um, and that you go to bbb.org forward slash add truth. Because now that the governor has in fact uh, – declare this a health uh, emergency, then we as the BBB can start gathering the different price gouging information that's out there that consumers are reporting, and then we get it to the proper authorities. And price gouging can be anywhere from about 15% and up, and it's usually around products, or it's appropriately around products um, that are involved in this type of healthcare uh, scenario. You know, I am seeing so many of these. There, I, I, I There are obvious scams that you're seeing on social media. Tell us about uh, some of the more blatant ones that uh, you're very concerned about. Yeah, the most blatant one is the one that's about cures, okay? Uh, You don't want to buy any cures-type products from a fella in the parking lot of your grocery store. And I know that makes me sound like, okay, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard of. But trust me, in a situation like this, People are desperate. People might not be thinking correctly. They've got a lot on their minds, and they might make a bad decision. So please don't buy things or uh, or any type of cure or products from someone uh, that is approaching you, especially in a parking lot and online. Uh, You know, all the cures, et cetera, they need to go through a healthcare professional. I see a lot of people uh, trying to promote a sale of protective masks. Right. And the thing about that is, again, you always want to do your research. So you don't want to do that from a Facebook and not that I'm not a Facebook fan, but you don't want to do that from a social media source or any source that's pushed out at you. What you want to do is go to that website itself with the URL and shop it from there where you can actually get good information about the organization. What's happening is either people are getting let's say masks, for instance, they're getting a mask that's really not effective or they're not getting a mask at all and they've already paid. So it's the typical bad guys out there either not giving you anything or not giving you what you thought you were going to get. Now we've got the stimulus payments and again, the scam. (laughs) this is a huge area of concern, isn't it, Pam Krim? Yeah, it is. As soon as they knew that money would be coming from our government for the individual stimulus program, people started um, scamming folks, trying to get bank information, saying we need this before you can get your stimulus package. And, you know, as most people do pay their taxes online, um, the government has most of your, your bank account information already on where to deposit that check. And they're also setting up a website that you can go to and let them know. So they're not going to contact you via a text or something like that. You need to um, go back and see how you paid your taxes, see if you gave them a bank account, 
or go to the um, the IRS website and get real good information. So you can expect probably scammers to be uh, getting on the telephone as well and saying that uh, we need more information before we can send you a check. I would imagine that could, right, that's going right. to be coming. <laughs> right, and the government doesn't have time to call all of us <laughs> to do that, right? Yeah. So again, if you want any information about any of these scams, right down to the zip code, um, we have the most notarized site in the United States to get scam information. And again, that's bbb.org forward slash scam tracker, or you can just go to bbb.org and you'll see a link on our website for the scam tracker. Pam, I am. Uh, but there's a lot of information there. Pam, I'm seeing more and more of these high school photos uh, all over <laughs> all over social media. And I like... I. I had a friend today that sent me one. Boy, that was, you know, that's kind of nice to see that. But what are the dangers about putting stuff like this up? And by the way, I saw someone who sent an old passport photo. Oh, gosh. And, and that that oh, really gosh. concerns me, Pam Krim. Well, two things. First, let me talk to you a little bit about the high school phenomenon. Yeah. I, too, saw that and thought, gee, isn't that fun? It's great to see where my friend Judy, you know, where she is, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, but the thing about it is when you think about going through security questions, when you're trying to utilize some sort of account or a bank account, many times they ask you security questions. Sometimes those security questions are, where did you go to high school? Yep. I know I have one that's one of my questions, as well as what year did you graduate from high school? So now they have your name. They have where you went to high school. And they have when you graduated, all of which could be part of your, quote, secret security question. Right. So although that's very fun and we all have a lot of time to be on Facebook right now, <laughs> um, you know, I really would refrain from that as well as refrain from all of those. Uh, what am I what would I what kind of dog would I be if I came back in two years or whatever? it is? <laughs> they have a lot of questions that you they're going to imagine what you're going to be. And everybody's always curious. And we know it's kind of pointless but fun but they too are gathering information on you the one i so really try to refrain from any of those <laughs> the one i'm not interested in is is this the way you're going to look in a few years i <laughs> exactly i know exactly. how i know how i look right now <laughs> there you go <laughs> um let's kind of summarize this about again the clearinghouse the bbb.org slash coronavirus that's a good starting place yeah. right it sure is. It's a very good starting place for business owners with a with just a lot of different information and information about the SBA loans, et cetera. OK, so it takes on the financial aspect of running your business and the HR aspect of running your business and a lot of things in between there. And then also for consumers, there's a lot of information there about the coronavirus. So we have really tried to do our part in educating and we're gathering information from all over the country. So we have a national organization that supports us in the information gathering. And then I have a heck of a great guy, uh, Sean Hedrick, who is also gathering all this information locally and uh, putting it on our website. So I really encourage people. I know our web traffic is up considerably due to the fact that uh, our website is very useful. So we're, we're very excited that we're able to, to work on our mission. And again, you, educating people. you have a PSA, a public service uh, announcement campaign promoting uh, 3,200 accredited businesses. That's, that's pretty cool. I really appreciate you bringing that up because um, it's called Building Trust in time, Trying Times. And if you trust is more important now than ever, I think. Mm -hmm. And we have 3,200 members that have gone through our process of becoming accredited who are very involved in being a trusted resource uh, and company and service provider for all of us in Southern Arizona. So we really ask people, go to our website, take a look at our directory, whatever it is service you need. Um, you can find out, number one, if they're open, as well as all the information about them. Uh, and it will say that they are BBB accredited. We do uh, put that on the directory, even though we have 3,400 businesses that are listed there, we do call out those that are accredited for all of our consumers. Very good. Pam Krim, CEO of the outstanding Better Business Bureau here in Southern Arizona. Stay safe, my friend. Thanks, Pam. 
You too, and I look forward to seeing you next month. All right. I'm an optimist. All right, me too. I hope I'll see you sitting across from me here in the studio.